The draft pick phase. In my opinion, this is the section of the game that is really overlooked by many players and even YouTubers. No! With a well-drafted team, you can win a game before you even start a match. But I haven't found one single detailed guide for it. Well, I will change that now. But we need two parts for it. God, please, no! This is the first one, where I'm going to give you the 10 most important tips that you always need to have in mind. The second part will come in a few weeks. I will explain you exactly what it is in a community tab post soon. Don't forget to subscribe, by the way, so you don't miss that. <laughs> now, before we start, let me say my usual Hello, my friends! Welcome back to the Ultimate Rank Up Guide series. Let's start now with tip number one show your hero. And this is one thing that always annoys me show the goddamn hero you wanna play. Before you enter the match, you should already have the heroes in mind that you want to play, so there shouldn't be an issue with showing them. When you show your hero, it also firstly avoids that an ally bans that hero, and secondly, you can tell them to ban hero X, because this one will counter you. Also, you can avoid early the fight of who's playing which role, because you have much more time to adjust, and potentially get a great team composition this way. Also, please don't be that guy who's not showing the hero, but demands from everyone else to do it. Rather be that guy that uses their full combo on the like button, so this video can spread to more ML players, and we don't have to play with the combo of Doom, Layla, Mia and Hanabi in the same team anymore. Tip number two, ban correctly. If you have the first ban, don't just auto ban a hero after three seconds. When your team has the first ban, it also means that you have the first hero pick. And that means if one of your allies or yourself can play an OP hero and the enemy is not banning that hero, hey, yo, what the f <laughs> you can pick that as a first pick and have a huge advantage over the enemy's team. So wait before banning anything. If no one chose anything and is not suggesting anything to ban, just do whatever you want of course, but give your allies a chance to communicate first. Next, if your hero has a hard counter that is also often picked, make sure to ban that one, even if that hero has not the highest ban priority. Communicate it with your team if you feel uncomfortable about it. Also, don't just ban a hero that is often banned. Banning Sun as a ruby player, for example, is a really bad idea, because you can greatly benefit from his clones. If you are not the one that can ban, make sure to communicate with your team why they should ban a certain hero. If many things doesn't work with randoms, this is one that often works, at least in my experience. Also, if your team has a second pick, you should make sure that the three to four most OP heroes are banned. Never try to pick a OP hero when your team has a second pick. When the enemy is not banning that OP hero, they most likely want to pick them for themselves. So don't even try it. The only way you can let this happen is if you can play the counter for that certain hero. Tip number three, counter picks. Try and learn the counters for each hero, or at least for the meta heroes right now. For example, as Marilla counters any hero who gains a lot of shield, Barrett's can counter Paquito, etc. With a good hero pool, you can easily counter the enemy's threats, what ultimately increases your chances of winning. Obviously, you can also use items to counter enemy heroes, like Athena's shield against burst mages and anti-heal items against regen heroes. You should also be careful when picking your hero. If you make the first pick, be aware that you can be countered by the enemy easily, what can take you out of the game completely, no matter how good you are. There are certain heroes though who can be used as first pick, because they can perform against pretty much any lineup very well. A few examples are Jawhead, Xborg, Popol, Kagura, or as mentioned the OP heroes that were not banned. Otherwise, you should really be careful when to pick your hero, especially in solo queue, because you never know how much you have to carry your teammates. If possible, you should try to be the last to pick your hero, to either counter pick an enemy hero or to make sure that you are not countered. As marksman player, for example, you should be always the one that picks last. Marksmen are just too easy to counter, so when you want to pick one, you should make sure to be the last pick, so you can see if it actually makes sense going into a match as a marksman. Let me give you an example. Let's say the enemy locked already two assassins. Hayabusa in the jungle and Amon for the gold lane. Do you think it's wise to pick a squishy marksman at that point? The answer is no. If they focus you, what good players will do, they will beat you around the park and you can't do much against it. Before you've reached your power spike, 
the match is most likely already over. Instead pick a hero that can perform well on the gold lane while being able to sustain a lot more than a marksman. Examples for that would be Bane, Argus or Sun that counters the enemy's assassins because they can't just one shot you. As jungler you could do the same, pick a hero who can sustain much as a jungler like Bane, Roger, Barretts, Jawhead or Belmont. As mid laner it's a huge advantage when you can pick and counter to the enemy's mid laner. For example the enemy plays with a Farsa, pick Kagura as counter pick and if the learning curve for Kagura is too much for you because you usually don't play mage, pick up Kadita. She's a nightmare for any immobile hero. Self advertising warning, I've recently made a guide for her while partnering with Mr. Beast for the Team Seas campaign. Go and check that out if you need to have a mage that can perform well against most matchups. Long story short, always think about if your pick makes sense, not only looking at your team but also at the enemies. Tip number 4, physical and magic damage. This should be obvious but I want to mention it anyway. You need a balance in the team between magic and physical damage dealers. For that you need to know of course which hero deals which kind of damage. So you can adjust your hero if needed. Preferably you should have 2 physical and 2 magic damage dealers plus the tank slash support where it doesn't matter what kind of damage that hero deals. Like this you have the best balance in the team and the enemy cannot shut down your whole team completely with simply buying magic defensive items because you all deal magic damage. Tip number 5, CC skills. You have to make sure that your team has enough heroes with strong CC abilities. With strong I mean any kind of stun where the enemy can move and use any skills. Slow is not a strong CC ability. In my opinion there should be at least 2 heroes in the team who have strong CC abilities and at least one that have strong AOE CC abilities like Ruby, Veil or Tigreal for example. When your team doesn't have many CC abilities but the enemy does it will turn into a shit show for you and I can guarantee that you will lose unless the enemy is really bad. Tip number 6, jungler and Roma. Always have a jungler and Roma, please. Tip number 7, team synergies. Be always aware of all the good team synergies of your main heroes. The easiest example is of course Johnson together with Odette, Bane, Kadita or Badang. But every hero have good and bad partners. If any of your allies can play such a hero, make sure that they are picking that hero. On that note also avoid a bad matchup like Valir and Franco for example. Good matchup can be the key to the victory in many cases because you can become an unstoppable force. Tip number 8, learn to adjust to the team. This is one of the most important tips of the whole guide. In solo queue you need to be able to adjust in order to be successful. If your teammates ask for a tank and you are S5, go ahead and tank for them. Just choose the right tank in order to not rely too much on your team. I recommend picking either a CC machine like Tigreal or Kufra or a tank who can deal a lot of damage by themselves like Jawhead or Gatot Kata for example. You can make a huge difference with both kinds of tank without being too dependent on your team. When picking a CC machine you can set up the enemies perfect even for the noob laner in your team. The only way that this doesn't work is when they just straight up ignore every good setup. But if they are so bad this is a lost match anyway most likely. That also requires of course that you're actually doing a good job as a tank. Doing a super jump flicker trick across half of the map is not a good setup because no teammate can follow up on this. Every role is necessary in the game and having two players doing the same job will not help anyone. You always have to think about one thing no matter if you hate it or not. These four other guys are your teammates for that game so try to play together as good as possible even if it's really hard sometimes. It's a 5v5 game and if you can handle this you must play a game that has no teammates. Tip number 9, emblems and spells. This is a quick one. Once your hero is picked always check your emblem and spell. You might need to adjust it to the enemy. For example as a squishy hero choose if you rather need flicker or purify. If the enemy has a lot of hard CC skills then purify is most likely the better option for example. Tip number 10, identify the enemy's key heroes. Now that all heroes are picked you have to identify who are the enemy's key heroes that you are facing and think of a strategy and build to be prepared for those heroes. If you are the jungler and the enemy has a jawhead or a Franco for example, tell your tank and mid laner to help you so you can secure the buff. Also if you want to invade the enemy's jungle early on tell that to your teammates as well. Also be aware of the hero's lineup for both teams. Does your team have many late game heroes and the enemy team many early game heroes 
Make sure to mention that to your allies that they should be careful and always be aware of that fact, even when your team is already down 2 to 12. If you have a late game composition, you just need to make sure to survive long enough to make an awesome comeback. On the other side, if you're in the team with a lot of early game heroes, make sure to finish it fast. Don't waste any time and take all objectives as fast as you can, so you're not giving the enemy a chance to make an awesome comeback. Now go and check out the whole rank up guy playlist to get even more important tips to boost your win rate massively. Also, a big shout out to my patrons Mist, Sensei Dragon, Corbear, Garo P, List, and Twisted J. Hit this link if you want to join it as well. See you over there!